Hello folks, Wolf Ninja here bringing you another nerdy video. It came to my attention by one of my players uh, recently that showing how to read uh, a classic 7, sorry, D&D &D 7 piece uh, dice set may be a good idea. Now, this is a standard die set. Now, there was used to be a much bigger die called a D100, but that's been, you know, fully discontinued. There's still a few of them out there. I recommend you never buy one. Never. It's they're really argumentative, a hard, argumentatively hard to read. But anyway, let's get to it. We have the D20. Oh, we have the D20. Oh, do do. We have a D10. We have a percentile die. Now, the percentile die is actually rolled with the D10 and this one together. We'll get into how to read, yet, how to read that later. This is a D12. As you can see. A D8. Which, as you can see, looks pretty much like a diamond. We have our st stereotypical D6. And the, uh, now this is the video, that, this is the die that uh, got my player wondering, like, uh, and who, again, who also maybe encouraged me to do this video, uh, was with the D4. Now, we're actually going to start from smallest to largest with the percentile die, which will simulate a D100 last. Now, for the most part, as you can see, most of the dies are very easy to read. Like that, there you go. That, the, uh, a clearly rolled a two. It's the topmost. Now, so yeah, we're actually, actually, let's forget uh, rolling the other dies because they're fairly easy to read. So we're just going to remove them away. And we're going to focus on rolling, when someone asks you to roll a percentile die or a D100, we're going to focus on a D4. So we're going to focus on them. Again, this is one of my. This is going to be one of my shortest videos, folks. Okay, so D4. As you can see, it has three numbers on each side. Okay, so we're going to roll that. Okay. That is a 1. As you can see, 1 is the topmost number on this little pyramid. We roll again. And as you can see, we rolled a four. Oh, get a bit closer there. There you go, see? Now, again, at first you'll think you'd be curious about it, but again, it's the number that you, it's, it's actually typically the number that you can read properly. As you can see, all the other numbers are on their sides or semi upside down at an angle. Whereas the top number is, you know, fairly easy to read. No matter what number it is, uh, it's always top and you can quite clearly make out that what number it is whereas with the others they're at an angle now we're moving on to the percentile die which is again the d10 well they're basically two d10s one includes zeros uh, and also the double zero oh, oh there we go get the camera yeah there you go and then the other is just ha has only a single zero. Now, here we go. We're going to roll these together. Okay, we rolled 50 and 5. So therefore, that technically that is, if that is uh, 55. Now, there is ways to get under 10 and, you know, 50. If we rolled the 10 on the D10, which is the zero, folks, again... It's, I understand that. Why did I not just bother to include another zero? It's for this moment. So there you go. With that being with the 10 on the D10 and then the 50, that is how we get 50. Exactly 50. Now, if we got. Now, in order to get less than. In order to get less than 10, what you need to roll is double zero on this. Okay, double zero. It means we haven't even reached. Uh, it means we're in the first ten increment, and then you roll this to the ten, and boom, 
we rolled a one. So therefore, technically, we got one, exactly one. Now, in order to get 100, however, I believe, it is a triple zero. So yeah, you can, it, so a D, a D100 goes from one to 100. So therefore, triple zero is 100. Um, so that's all again. Let's do a few more examples. Okay, we rolled clearly a tree. And we rolled 23. I do apologize for some dogs, uh, folks. Yeah, as you can see, folks, that's 25. So it's again the D, the, the when you roll a percentile or a D100, it's very complicated. Again, it can. Be Come on, folks. Sorry about, that, Sorry about that, folks. Uh, did I, was I actually muting it? Yes, I was. But yeah. Uh, I, I checked the DMG in the player's handbook, and they were never clear about the, how to roll a D100. So that's why like, I, I, searched, I scoured the internet until I was able to find out how you read it. Because, again, they actually did have, at one point, an actual D100, which was, to be honest folks, with you, folks, was just a, like a ball with numbers written all over it and then you rolled and it was a topmost number but again that 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 method was influenced so uh, i've i read that like people kept the slightest movement on the table would then alt could possibly alter the effect much more so than you know simply rolling a d20 a d20 because it has a lot very large flat points you know you know see it's not going to move Whereas with the D100, apparently, just those simple actions alone would have caught, potentially caused it to move. Uh, so that's why eventually they came up with just a simple two die system. Oh, there you go, I rolled two. So yeah, there you go. That, I can see we're getting very uh, exact results, 53. There's no question about it. 31. 89. So, yeah, folks, that is how you roll um, a D. That's how you read a D4 and how you uh, roll a D100. Now, again, in D&D, if you're especially uh, interested in magic casters, it is extremely important for you to actually buy multiple uh, dice sets. Because as you get to more more and more powerful spells, you start needing more and more spell uh, dice. For example, simply by reaching level 5, if you're playing a wizard, chances are you're going to take the spell Fireball. Which requires you to have not, not just one, not two, not three, not four... Not even five, but eight D six. So yeah, to conclude the damage, to conclude. Oh wait, uh, hold on. yeah, there you go. To conclude the damage of the most traditional spell. You need eight D six. Now, luckily, I have plenty of D sixes for when I ramp up the damage. But yeah, folks, it's eight D six once you reach level five. And again, there are some effects that require to roll lots more. For example, let's look at L and his um, sneak attack. By the time he reaches level twenty, he rolls ten D six D sixes when he does a sneak attack, and Let's look at the other archetype for Rogue, uh, Assassin, who, if he gets a surprise attack on someone, it's an auto crit, which means you would then double his damage die, which includes his sneak attack. So that 10d6 becomes 20d6. Now, there are several ways which most players deal with 
the scale of the dice. My solution was because again I liked it. Um, I like to be uh, a bit able to travel to the, my different games if possible and play my games when uh, needed. And that is where dice come. Now there are dice. Tra there are things called dice trays, dice towers, and dice cups. Uh, I prefer the dice cup. It is much easier to travel with, and the dice cup that I bought has really cool designs. And I got uh, for less than seven euro. I also got this really cool seven-piece uh, dice set. You know, it, I, I just love the design of them. You know, it's it's really nice. It was worth the money. But okay, so. If I was to roll, let's say, a fireball with my favourite class, the wizard, I'll just throw the dice into the dice cup, shake it, turn it upside down, and lift. Oh, we got some. And then we just, you know, count up the numbers. Uh, let's say five, ten, fourteen, eighteen, twenty. 22, 25, 28. So there are 28 points of damage uh, a fireball would do. So again, a uh, fireball actually goes up uh, 1d6 per level uh, higher than what you go up. Like, for example, in the special event with Adventures League for the launch of Modern Kinds, I was playing a ninth level wizard. And I cast the te uh, max my maximum level fireball, which gave me two extra d6. So I got ten. Let's see. That means ten minimum damage to a maximum of sixty. Oh, well that one next one because it came out of the cup. Ah, oh, well, 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 very badly with that one, folks. Triple ones. Oh wow, triple ones. Six, ten. 15, 20, 23, 25, 26, 32 points of damage. So even though you have a bad result with this 10 uh, D6, I got a lot. So yeah, there you go, folks. Um, so yeah, Dice Tower is a fairly also simple. It's a simple device where you, instead of rolling the dice, you drop them into the, uh, a wooden or plastic container. And there's like little plastic bits crisscrossing along it to knock the dice around. And then there's like a, a ramp at the bottom with a tread that makes the dice roll out. Um, so again, that's very simple. You don't have to roll your dice. You don't have to worry about loud slamming down of a cup. Um, it's actually the most efficient way of doing it. Uh, just because, again, it's, it's the most quiet and whatever. Now then, there's my then there's the other method uh, called uh, a dice tray. Um, so yeah, dice uh, cup, dice tray, dice tower. A dice tray is the most advertised thing I've seen besides dice towers. And you simply have a tray, you roll your dice, and it has a it's made of wood mostly, with a nice soft thing on the inside, so you don't hear this wood clattering, you know. And also, it means that your dice are not going to slowly get, you know, eroded uh, less. But yeah, folks, that is it. Any more? Uh, I'll be releasing more D&D tutorial videos uh, later on.